Welcome to episode 92 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is here. How are you doing, Warren? I'm here. I am uh, doing as well as possible. And uh, Thursday? Is it th- the days just don't make sense anymore. Yeah, they, they don't. Yeah, they they make no sense. So I'm going, I'm going with Thursday. Uh, so yeah, I'm good. How about you? Yeah, yeah, same same way here. I'm just uh, just uh, working it from home and uh, doing the old uh, sit in the house and self quarantined and just like I think a lot of us out there. But uh, that's why we got that, that's why we got you to, to watch us and listen to us and uh, hear about everything that's going to go with iOS. So there's there's plenty of news out there. So we're gonna we're hitting some some uh, news stories here, and then a couple topics this week. It's Apple's birthday. Nine, uh, April first, nineteen seventy six. Where's your, your sound? Your soundboard. Woo, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, then uh, iPad is ten years old, so you got another anniversary, and then um, and then your withdrawal from beta is is back. And you're, it's back. It's over. Yeah, my uh, the week so, long, the week long of being on the same release of uh, the software as all the normals out there. Yeah, it really took a toll on me. It was worse than the quarantine. <laughs> So uh, let's uh, get to the first story. Um, exclusive, exclusive. 9 to 5 Mac just published this uh, as we record this uh, about two hours ago. iPhone 9 launch imminent. 2020 iPhone S, quote unquote, iPhone SE is in red, white, and black. So they're being patriotic a little bit. Uh, but uh, black instead of blue. Uh, but uh, 9 to 5 Mac learned that there was some new information about the long rumored entry level iPhone, which we're thinking it's going to be like the uh, the entry level low priced iPhone, which you never hear the low in price in iPhone in one sentence. Um, and they've got got, got it detailed out pretty well here. I'm I'm impressed enough. You know, they've they've got three colors and they've got cases that are available for it. Um, uh, sizes of uh, storage: sixty four gigs all the way to two fifty six. Uh, but they st- st- they're saying the pricing they can't confirm it, but three ninety nine is probably going to be a base price. If that is the case, this phone is going to sell like crazy. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm looking through the article. What's the uh, size going to be? The actual physical size? That's the only thing they're not telling everybody is they don't have an actual uh, description of the size. I, I I'm thinking it's going to be a probably similar to the iPhone eleven, maybe even the iPhone ten as far as size. Um, I'm guessing, uh, right? Because the, uh, the SC, the SC was definitely the four inch, version. the four inch screen, right? And everybody right. loved that real small size one. But they uh, loved the size one, and the XR, and the the ten R, the uh, uh, the eleven is basically the low cost, you know, model. So it might not be that either. So you think maybe it's going to be like the uh, the size of the eight, pretty much? That's uh, what they're saying. One. That's what they're yeah. saying. You know, it's it's going to be hard to say what. Uh, uh, what the, what they decide to, to do with that. So um, it'd be interesting to see. We'll, we'll definitely uh, be watching and uh, seeing it. They say tomorrow. So as we record this, so stay tuned. I guess we'll, we, might, we might even be talking about it next week. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, I'm not particularly excited about the phone, but a lot of times, they, no. uh, a lot of times they'll release a few things at the same time. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if something else jumped out at the same time as this phone when it does. Yeah, don't know what. It's not going to be the magic keyboard that I want so badly. But <laughs> put the price okay. towards a magic keyboard. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Apple lets Amazon Prime Video app offer in-app purchases on iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV. Um, the Amazon Prime Video, uh, you know, apps always has been on those platforms for a while, but they never really would let you order the stuff uh, through the app. You'd have to go outside the app to do it because it was. Uh, because uh, you know, because Apple and uh, Amazon always were at wits with each other, but apparently they've kind of kissed and made up here, from what I'm reading here. Um, and it's allowing Amazon to use its own payment system and skirting that in-app purchase uh, screen. Meaning, does Apple get a cut of this anymore? Maybe not. Um, and in order, they I don't think they even did. That, that's that's the that's the thing. So uh, it's even saying uh, there's going to be a dedicated store tab where they can make their purchases of TV shows and movies. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, we talked a little bit about it yesterday and yesterday I didn't, yeah, we did. uh, I said, I didn't read that they had the Apple TV, uh, app as well. And I said that would probably be the most important place to have it. And so it is including the Apple TV, which is good. Um, 
you know, I'm listening to some newscasts and podcasts or some speculation on maybe uh, uh, Amazon, you know, at, you know, kicks back to Apple uh, outside this whole transaction. They, you know, give them a percentage yeah. of something. Um, but, you know, the, my other feeling, is, you know, I have two feelings. One is a lot of people complained that they couldn't do it because it is confusing. It's, you know, you're True. sitting there on your couch, you're about to, sh- and this has happened to me. I was, you know, sitting on my couch, go to Amazon Prime on my Apple yeah. TV, go to watch a movie and, and I want to get it. And it basically says, uh, okay, get it. And they said, how to get it. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to, you know, and, and I bet a lot of people don't go through with what they're about to do because it's a pain in the right. butt to, to find a laptop. So I bet the Apple got a lot of complaints about that. And my other, you know, thought is maybe, you know, with everything going on, people are just kind of, you know, the companies are being a little sympathetic towards uh, us uh, and making things a little bit easier for stay at home entertainment. That's my hope at least. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's definitely, I think so what's going to happen. Amazon is, is a, is a big, big player. And when it comes to entertainment, they're, they're trying to get everybody in there just like Apple is. So why not? Welcome the welcome the the competition because uh, you know Apple seems to be opening up theirs and by putting it on smart TVs, uh, Apple TV Plus app, and uh, and other platforms. So why not? Do we share share the wealth when it comes to when it comes to that? So yeah. Um, yep. Other story uh, caught my eye was uh, Apple and Goldman Sachs are letting the Apple card holders defer the pay their April payments. Uh, how nice of them! Uh, there, it's a it's a it's a um, a way of you can easily opt in just by sending a message uh, and uh, from the wallet app and informing um, Apple Card uh, Apple Card that they want to 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 take a uh, one month reprieve and there'll be no interest charge to that and sure enough they did it and didn't you say you did it and it was like like within minutes right it's, per- it's pretty instant yeah I um, did it just to test it out I was, I bought something but I paid it off anyways uh, after I spoke to them but. Yeah, right. if you just go into the Apple app, if you go into your wallet and you go to the Apple card and under transactions, you pick a transaction and there's a little button that says report an issue. Click on that. It opens up a iMessage. Uh, basically, it says to Apple, but it's really Goldman Sachs. And you say, um, I want to I want to not pay. Uh, basically, you say, I don't want to pay. Uh, I, I read that I don't have to pay uh, uh, my, my bill this month. You're like, okay, I could certainly help you with that. And all of a sudden you get an email saying you don't have to pay this month. So. Yeah. I tried it go. too. And it was, it was a matter of minutes. I mean, just yep. send a text to them and well, I got the email and, and looked at the, the date was changed on May 31st. So. Yeah. So that was, um, so uh, for, it's two months now. It was March. They did March and now they're doing April as well. Right. So uh, yeah. Anybody want to take advantage of that? Uh, check it out because uh you may need a bit of a break um so. even if you even if you don't i mean it's free money true it gives you another <laughs> extra month so you don't have to pay it off exactly. um nine to five mac had this interesting article today about uh, uh they found a uh, a support uh video from apple that actually apple, apple published this is apple was referencing an unreleased air tag item in the uh, trackers in their new support video because if you look uh, in this picture on the link we have in the show notes of course um it has uh under enable offline finding and it just says offline finding enables this device and air tags to be found so uh Whoops! I guess they yeah. uploaded this video and then realized that they had took that screenshot, uh, which of course have since immediately removed that video because the link to the video was in the, in the article. And now it's a ghost. What do you think? God. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been removed. It's uh, pretty pretty clear that it's still there. I mean, uh, again, there was a whole leak with the air power where there was a, a picture of it right. in in one of the. Uh, in a product manual, I think it was in one of the product manuals or something. And uh, so, I mean, this is not, you know, this is not, you know, in ink yet, but uh, I haven't heard, you know, it's, so it's been delayed. I don't know if it's been delayed, but they've been talking about it for a long time at this point. It's been over a year. They've been talking about these air tabs. Yeah, they have. So, I mean, that was the thing with air power is basically they were talking about it for a year and nothing happened. So, you know, you get a little bit, you know, cynical when it takes this long to release, you know, the equivalent of basically a tracker or a tile kind of thing. So, you know, it it may come soon it may never come we shall see hard to see yeah it, it i want i'm well, well, gonna want them that that's yeah, for sure of course because yeah. yeah. uh 
Does that mean that they're Sherlocking uh, 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 the uh, the tiles? Because that tile was the one that says has those out in the market right now. So but there I, was I, a I, there was a tile wrote something, and they said that Apple has become. Did you see this? Yeah, that they're becoming a, a monopoly. They're a monopoly, and they're becoming hard to work with, or or basically uh, hard to you know deal with more or less. So, um, you know, that's. If, I don't know if they're going to show, if they do it better. I, I, you know, I never liked the idea of the tile because it's it is limited yeah. to, to basically. Um, here here's the article. I put in there. It says <laughs> tile tile claims Apple uh, anti competitive behavior has gotten worse, not better. Is basically what they're saying. Um, but anyways, it, you know, if the air tags work the way they're supposed to, then they'll be a million percent better than. Uh, tile will because tile just you know when you're out of bluetooth range or uh even their little um their their um what do they have a a system i forget what the, uh, if they're yeah. ne- next to other tile users i guess is something right. that they could see each other but well i i remember they originally i mean the ones i have you, they 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 actually the batteries were dead and then you, it was basically a throwaway item you couldn't replace the batteries so i know the yeah. new ones i don't think you have to do that anymore they either they recharge i believe no but um, just the fact that if it's you know if it's out of range and you know that's useless i mean i thought about you know with with the new puppy now you know we're definitely going to look at the tile uh the apple thing right. because uh the, you know putting a tile on the dog is pretty useless if they get out um you know, it's only good if it's something close to you, uh, more or less. But, um, you know, if it works the way it's supposed to work, uh, yeah, they're going to sell well, as long as they're not $300 each. That's true. Oh, yeah, and I also forgot to mention that uh, we are, we are uh, uh, broadcasting live on Facebook. And, of course, our pal Guy Cyril says, no, it's not Zoom, because he does, yeah. doesn't, for some reason, doesn't like Zoom. But that's yeah, okay. Zoom's getting, getting, Zoom is getting... Not the best of press recently, but... No, they again. haven't with security. I guess we could talk about that a little briefly because we did talk about uh, video conferencing last week. Yeah, um, but uh, a little bit a little bit bad press, but I'd still trust it. I mean, yeah, look, at, really. we're recording this now and the stability is still in, is just incredible. I'm um, going to be doing a, a webinar uh, on Saturday for uh, my Apple user group and uh, I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to work real, real well. We got the webinar tools in place so I can... You know, keep keep it in control. We'll probably have about thirty or forty people join. So, uh, but I think, uh, yeah, I think it'll be fine. So, Just anyway, on, we talked about that last week. We don't need to re- re- reiterate all that fun stuff. Don't um, exchange, uh, don't exchange credit card numbers or anything like that. Or for yeah, Zoom, yeah. there you go. Um, and um, Apple updated iMovie and all the iWork apps for, for iOS now has trackpad pad and mouse support, which is awesome. Yep. Um, they they. Earlier, the, uh, earlier in the day, a couple of days ago, they also released it for for the Mac. Uh, so they released the new ones for i for iPad as well. Uh, it works on iPhones and iPads, but the trackpad, of course, support is only on the iPad. So, um, and all the release notes are in there on the show notes to so the link here. Um, they got some new t- templates, which I thought was cool. Did you did you, get, did you look through any of these templates on some of the in all the on uh, pages, numbers, and keynote? On iOS now, I did on the uh, on my Mac. I kind of opened it up and played around with it, but not on uh, iOS yet. Yeah, but uh, the the we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Uh, the Magic Keyboard and Magic uh, uh, Trackpad support is awesome. I mean, I I, I uh, hooked the keyboard up to it too as well. It uh, works really well, so it's uh, it's definitely something that you're going to want to check out and, and, and be able to highlight uh, text and be able to manipulate d- documents so much easier. Um, I don't even want to look at it until I get my $300 uh, magic keyboard. Because <laughs> you, so. t- you want your touchpad on your, on your, on your I, magic I keyboard. Want, I want it to be, like, perfect. I don't want to, like, uh, butcher it together with some kind of hack or uh, some kind of old trackpad or whatever. Yeah, I just want a right. new trackpad uh, feeling. Uh, so, yeah, check that out. So, um and we talked we talked last week about the iPad Pro, and our, our I think our final uh, decision was that I don't think it's worth upgrading if you have the if you have the 2018 version, right? That's what we yeah. said. Well, this article, this is uh, Mac rumors, but uh, I fix it. Uh, had found most of the internals of the 2020, 2020 iPad Pro are the same as the 2018 model. That confirms that the device is relatively and just basically an incremental update. So really, the only thing you're really getting is uh, is the, the camera, 
is the upweighted camera. Um, and they looked at the, the chip, the, the, the Bionic chip, which contains an eight core GPU and enhanced thermal architecture, the tune performance controllers. And then it's also paired with six gigs of RAM, which is an upgrade to four gigs of RAM, but, uh, uh, right. All but the one terabyte model. So, uh, and I think this pretty much made made the decision that uh, it uh, it's not worth upgrading if you have the 2018. As of now, and, yeah, and you know how it goes, you know, they, unless they, you know, and they will, they'll come out with something that only works on the lidar camera, and it's going to be awesome, and everybody's going to be wanting it, and it's going to be like yeah. some kind of, it's going to be like Pokemon Go, but it's going to be better, and it's going to be like a, you know the thing so that that's when everybody's going to do it but as of right now it's not uh anything that i i'm missing i don't have any foam yeah. on this one not right yet as long, so. as long as the smart keyboard works with the 2018 yeah i haven't even seen you know I've, none of us have if you don't buy it you don't see it so you, you can't go to apple right. you can't go to best buy you can't really even pick it up that's so. true that's um, true which is probably a good thing for apple at this point because if it was that much different or if it, you know some people needed to see it it would be a yeah. problem so but again we said before if you don't have an ipad pro and you're looking to get one then go with the 2020 yeah, uh, for sure for sure yeah yep um i fix it of course no surprise rated their this repairability at three out of ten uh i watched the video and yeah there's there's tons of adhesive everywhere uh it amazes me how they get get those apart um and and how that uh how, how they get those things apart but uh it uh yep that's that's where i will things where i say man you got to put all all that stuff in there somehow and then you can't just uh can't can't use like screws uh that's just too tight you know you gotta right and it, that, it is that's how it's gotta go here so yep um this article caught my eye was iOS 13.4 and uh, and Mac uh, OS Catalina prevented you from making FaceTime calls from some older devices. Yeah. Uh, and they said the latest software released by Apple a week ago uh, will prevent you from making these FaceTime calls to older devices. Uh, iOS 13.4, iPad OS 13.4, and others were unable to make FaceTime, call, uh, FaceTime calls to devices running iOS 9.3.5, 9.3.6, and 9.3.6. Is the latest available for the 4S? Um, so and the iPad Mini and the iPad 2, and so so. In other words, if you have really old devices like that, you're out of luck. <laughs> I think yeah. Yeah. that's a fair Go assumption ahead. because those devices are really old. I mean, you're going six to eight years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I I, I am working a couple hours now outside the house, and yeah. I do work at a. Um, it's a it's a retirement community slash uh, right. uh, assisted living nursing kind of thing, um, and I've seen iOS devices that are old. I mean, I, I've, yeah. I the other day I saw somebody brought me like uh, something with the original. I think it was the first iPad. Speaking of the ten year app, uh, uh, anniversary with the uh, software running on, it, and they they were using it, and I'm like, you know, so. These people, you know, a lot of the things I'm doing is getting in, in this time is getting these people to um, talk to their family. And if you're that poor person on the other side who's trying to talk to this person on these old iPads and iOS devices and it doesn't work, it's not a great time for this to happen. So Apple had yeah. said that this is not, uh, they're like, oh, we, you know, we'll look into this. I, it, it's not a thing that I think they, I don't want to say meant, I'm sure they meant to do it, but I, I don't think they <laughs> expected anybody to notice and they have. So I, I think when people st uh, started writing them, they, they kind of took notice and they made a story. Yeah. So my well, guess, my guess is that it will be sorted somehow. Well, I think, you know, why it got press is because of the pandemic and everybody at home and everybody's using FaceTime and more uh, unprecedented amounts. And yeah, it's just a bad time. It. Bad time. Bad to, it's a bad time to cut off communication between you know yeah. and you know again the older generation have usually has yeah. the older they're, they're, iOS devices and not older yeah, iPads so limit in the budget they don't want it they don't want they're not ready to upgrade and mm -hmm. but it is what it is um yep. the yep. uh other other 
article was uh, SiriusXM. I'm a SiriusXM subscriber, but uh, I think this is great that uh, SiriusXM opened up a free trial to SiriusXM Radio online and in the app. Um, they have a free trial going on that'll go on from when this was recorded uh, till May 15th of this year, 2020. Um, it'll instantly give America, it's only in America, so you only US listeners, uh, 300 plus channels. Allow you to listen to your favorite stations, even Howard Stern, politics, sports stations, all that fun stuff. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it's. A, they've got some great content. Um, so if, you, if you've been thinking about looking at SiriusXM before, check it out. Go go to SiriusXM.com. Links in the in this in the show notes here, and uh, you can uh, you can use it on your SiriusXM app, and you can also sync it up with CarPlay if you want and be able to listen to it in your car. So, what'd you think? Um, I think uh, seriously, seriously, seriously. Yeah. So if you're not a subscriber, you should do it. Yeah. Seriously, do it. Yeah. <laughs> um other big story was uh Apple bought uh the weather app Dark Sky. Um and uh this was an interesting uh purchase and they uh this is this this app is found to be one of the most accurate uh weather uh, apps out there. And I know my favorite weather app actually is Carrot. I don't know about yours, but that's right, you don't buy apps when it comes to that, but uh, uh I think Carrot's not the weather. Carrot's apps. a great app. Yeah. Yeah. I think Carrots is a, just an amazing app, and they were using a lot of uh, dark size API, but uh, now what's going to end up happening, they've already made the announcement that uh, if you have it on Android or on, on, on your Wear app, a wearable device, uh, it's uh, no longer going to be uh, av- available. They're taking it out of the App Store on, on those stores, and it's going to exclude be exclusive to iOS. Um, they are, as soon, by July 1st, they'll be shutting down Android and Wear OS, that's it. Uh, they're also, they're going to probably not accept any more signups for their API, uh, and uh, it'll shut down that down by the end of uh, 2021. So I think, like 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 the article says, I anticipate that that Apple will more than likely will probably build build our dark sky into its own weather app or just make it the standard de facto app uh, with all this in there. Because since they right now get everything from the Weather Channel, so what do you think? Yeah, it's not particularly accurate the way it is, so you can't get any worse. I think so. Yeah. But I heard people talk about Dark Sky, and then I know they like it. So, I mean, what is it? It's pretty, it's pretty like up to the minute kind of stuff, or up to the second, not second, but it's pretty, right? Like it kind of tells you where where things are coming, right? Like uh, clouds and rain. And yeah, it, it's very accurate. It's right down to oh, you better get you better get your umbrella out, and it's right. I mean, it says it's going to rain in, in ten minutes, and okay. um, yeah. and, and um. I would say maybe I'll try it, but now I, you know, I definitely don't want to pay for it now. That would be stupid. <laughs> I gotta wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, that uh, that's that, and then uh, of course they announced T-Mobile and Sprint. The merger is final now, and but there is a little bit of a snafu with that. Uh, the 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 public utility in California still has to approve it uh, to make it legal in California. Uh, one of the biggest states in the country. Um, but uh, I can't see that not happening. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. They, they've they already said in the article we have on here that they're not going to make any changes to either either side, both Sprint and T-Mobile. Keep all the plans in place and nothing's going to change. I think really it's what's going to end up happening is just a rebranding. And then the, eventually all the Sprint stores will become T-Mobile stores. And I'm sure they will probably close ones that are nearby to each other and, and try to consolidate. I'm sure those things will start happening as well. So. Um, and I think they said they, you know, they weren't going to, uh, you said they're not going to make any changes to uh, Sprint, uh, the plans or too much changes plans. to it. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah. they did say they were going to take their spectrum and turn into the 5G spectrum, I think is what they were saying. Right. right. Good. Uh, and it's that, all good for us. I mean. Yeah. Well, I'm a T-Mobile customer. I'm, I'm happy and I'm even happier. Um, this even makes me happy too, is uh, even though I, I don't, wouldn't, probably wouldn't have ever paid for it, but the, that new uh that, that new network called Quibi is going to start up on April 6th. It's a uh, new network that's going to have all these, all this independent content. And I think it was uh, started up with uh, Meg Whitman, the former uh, CEO of eBay and HP. Um, and uh, that it's supposed to launch on April 6th in uh, T-Mobile customers. Uh, if you're on a Magenta or a, T- or a T-Mobile one plan, will actually get access to the streaming service for a full year for free, which is pretty cool. It's it's ad ad based, but hey, free is free. 
Free is um, free. Then they'll give you, and then they'll give you the option at that point is if you want to, uh, you either can keep it uh, and then it would take over your Netflix account because you get, you know, because us, our team, us T-Mobile uh, customers that have those same plans get free, free Netflix. So I think I'll lean towards keeping Netflix. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you have to choose? I didn't know you had to choose. At the end of the one. year, you have to choose which one you want to keep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, I I think, think that's Netflix a no brainer. one. <laughs> yeah. I'll, so these are like 10. So I'm reading it's basically you get, uh, and I've seen the commercials already. Uh, yeah. But yeah. it's like 10 minute or less uh, videos, uh, which right. kind of is not a bad idea. I think well, as they long got, as the content's good. I mean, they got some stuff like uh, Chrissy Teigen, the, 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 that's the John Legend's wife. Uh, it's going to have yeah. a court show and Jennifer Lopez, yeah. World Forte, the BBC News, a lot of other stuff is going to be on there. Um, and they also say there's a ma- another major feature of uh, Quibi is called Turnstile, where you can switch your Turn phone your between phone portrait, portrait and landscape and mode. Does interesting. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Another another piece of another another uh, content uh, provider that's out there that we get to consume. I guess um, I can do anything for ten minutes. Yeah. And last story we have here is the U.S. Census employees will now trade in paper forms for 500,000 iPhone 8 handsets this year. Uh, this was an Apple Insider. Uh, it's a census year, and then you know, we're going to finally going to have uh, census takers that will have have automated uh, ways of being able to submit this information instead of pen and clipboard like they've done in the past. So uh, so this is quite a milestone. I think this is centuries old how we've, we've done the census every 10 years, but uh, that this year marks that uh, centuries old event uh, that was all households will be able to respond online, which I did. Did you do, the, did you do your census? Uh, no not yet um, no, you're good. they're, they're going to come to your house if you don't do it I was actually one of those people I I, I was a census taker years and years and years ago um, so it looks like uh, it, high school. They're, they're, they're actually contracting with an Illinois based firm here in Chicago CDWG to lease 500,000 iPhones for census employees yeah, they're known that. as un- enumerators to go door to door with taking the count, and uh, yeah, they're they're very proud of being able to do that. I think it's great. That's great. I'm glad to hear that they're going to do this. Yeah, it's better than pen and paper. Although I I heard they were doing uh, like some kind of Palm Pilot thing ten years ago, but I'm sure that didn't work out so well either. So this is true. <laughs> so let's go on to the topics of today. First. Uh, discussion i wanted to say happy birthday to apple it's been 44 years since apple's founding and you know they uh and they talk about uh steve jobs steve wozniak and ron wayne were the finders founders excuse me and uh how ron wayne got cold feet and decided to uh sell his shares and then he uh became uh collecting social security living in nevada Whereas we know what Steve happened to Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak. <laughs> yeah, although he says he doesn't regret anything. If you see interviews, no, he, with I've seen Wayne, interviews with him. Yep, and the, it, um, regrets. You know, he says, you know, it's it's a different lifestyle, and uh, you know, it, it is. You know, it's you know, it's there's something to be said about you know money versus happiness, and I'm sure Steve Wozniak was very stressed out for many years of his life. Right. And, you know, he's... Read a lot of stories and seen a lot of movies showing his stresses. And, he's uh, very, yeah, you, know, work, you know, working for Steve, you know, with Steve Jobs, it's probably hard, and, you know, was, a lot yeah. of pressure on you, so, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Ron Wayne would have liked to be somewhere in between the two places either you know where he, where he ended up and where uh, steve wozniak ended up somewhere between there probably would have been better but um you know is he still alive or didn't he's still alive isn't i he? think ron wayne still is yeah they, they yeah. interviewed him for one of those uh those documentaries i remember seeing an interview with him uh, a while ago. i'm sure there's plenty of them on youtube so yep. if you really yep. wanted to find out uh, more about it but uh uh yeah, but yeah, it's it's great. I mean, I was I, I when I started young in my uh, in my life when I was in high school, I was using Apple Twos, and um, and uh, then I was dumb and didn't stay in the technology for a number of years, so I, I lost touch with Apple. And then uh, come 2006, when they switched to the Intel processor on the Mac, and uh, I fi- finally got my first Mac, and uh, the rest is history. And then the iPhone yeah. came, and here we are doing this podcast. 
I was out in California um, years ago, and um, next to Google uh, headquarters, there's uh, the computer museum out there. Um, yep. And uh, they had all sorts of Apple stuff on display, which uh, you know, which is great. And yeah, it's just amazing to see, you know, how that all started. We actually took a ride out to Steve uh, Jobs' house while we were out there. Um, yep. You know, just you know, you try to picture, and you know. The the mid you know seventies and what they had to work with it's pretty amazing what they did so yeah happy birthday to them yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's, sure uh, Steve Jobs Steve Jobs is always rolling in his grave no matter what so he oh, he'll yeah. never be happy but you know he's constantly he rolling he he's like uh he's like one of the, <laughs> he's like a rotisserie at this point he just keeps spinning yeah. and spinning and then in his grave but. They had the, the mouse on the iPad and the uh, the iPad Mini. He didn't like that either. He's too small, so he's just shaking his head. Yep. And then the other milestone was the iPad. The iPad uh, was uh, was uh, introduced for the first time uh, this month uh, in 2010. So 10 years since we've had the iPad. I remember I owned the first iPad. Did you? Oh yeah. Uh, I remember seeing the keynote and I remember getting that yep. big thing. And. Uh, yep, I- Loved that it. was a big iPad. I love that iPad. That was huge. When it first got it, was, it. it had a lot of storage too, because I think they were using a different. Uh, was it? Was was it solid state? I can't even remember. Oh yeah, it was solid state. But it was I don't solid know, was state. It Sixteen or was it thirty-two? I, I think it only. It the, was the bigger than was, this. The, the subsequent ones were definitely smaller. Uh, they went down, and the first one had more storage, and that's why, like early on, a lot of people were still holding on to the first gen because they had, they had all their movies on it because they had a little more storage than the newer ones on it. But, um, yeah, that thing was a beast. It was it was heavy. It was, uh, but it was great. You know, we, uh, you know, I definitely, uh, I was hooked right away. And uh, I've had Me pretty too. much, most, uh, you know, the, obviously I skipped a couple. If I, you know, if I got the Pro, there's no reason I got the, you know, I got the the latest regular iPad, so I've skipped a whole bunch yep. in, the, in the meantime. I did but too. I, I didn't get every, I, I didn't get every model. <laughs> yeah, but but currently now I have an iPad uh, Mini Five and I have a iPad uh, Pro Eleven Inch. So, um, yep. and, and you know, I oh well, they keep going. Yeah. No, it, it was uh, just thinking about. I mean, uh, you just were very limited what you could do with it before. You couldn't copy and paste of so that still during that time with the version of iOS. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Um, and the interesting thing was that f- the first gen, just like they did with the first uh, gen iPhone, iPad, the I- iOS did not upgrade very, uh, uh, very, uh, very far. I mean, it stayed with like the original, I think the original iOS, uh, uh-huh. until they moved to the iPad two. And then that yeah. one would last a long time. Yeah. Um, and we just mentioned that iOS, uh, the iPad two has an I- iOS nine. So um but that was a great ipad i had the iphone i had the ipad too that was uh that was a good model um then it kept evolving um but uh i definitely uh definitely think it's one of my favorite devices it really I is think, i think actually the ipad one is what i was you know talking about i saw i saw in the uh, in the uh at my work i think she actually had one and it was still running so you don't see a lot of them still in the wild actually uh, working uh, because the batteries started to go most of them anyway. So. Deteriorating. Yep. They're deteriorating. So, uh, yep. yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a shame, but, uh, they, batteries, I, I seen iPad, the, the first iPads, the batteries are still, still going, still going strong. So, yep. um, yeah. Um, but uh, those are our the topics of those uh, of, of past history. But uh, let's go to uh, the the present and the future. You are back, baby, with beta. Yeah, it, <laughs> and it's such a minor. I, I can't even. Tell I know, there's nothing to talk anything. about. I know. I don't think anything <laughs> actually changed. I mean, the only thing I will say is I think my iPhone does feel a little bit snappier than before. Does it? Yeah, I, I have I have it on the 10R that I have here. Um, I haven't really looked at it very closely, but um, but they really haven't. Uh, what, what was it supposed to? What, was there any? I mean, there's nothing. I can't. Don't see I don't anything. Think there that was, they've, I don't think there was anything at all that was announced, at least. So um, I think basically, even in the release notes on the beta site, the developer site, it doesn't uh, really. I think the article just said much. basically it, they're just kind con- of concentrating on bug fixes uh, and. Yeah. Until the until they go to the next release of the uh, uh, iOS fourteen or whatever, 
So, Interesting. They went to thirteen four dot five right away. Um, yeah, yeah. Instead of one, two, or three. And or then four. they did they did the watch, and I did the watch too. And um, you know, again, nothing, nothing earth shattering. But I, you know, as I said, I think it feels a little bit snappier. So I, as a, you know, how this goes at the uh, at the end of the, uh, the year before uh, before WWDC, right. what they do is they try to perfect it to yeah you know, to be the final version of you know of the you know the, the major release so uh that's what they're doing at this point it's just you know not no new features basically just any other bugs that are left yeah. over and any other uh, performances they could tweak is basically what they're going to do at this point yep yep makes sense makes sense it totally makes sense um the um and that's beta that's that beta, beta. So, yeah. So um, I found this really interesting article on uh, iPhone hacks, and I thought we would use it as kind of a template to talk a little bit about uh, using the mouse and trackpad with the iPad. But of course, you don't want to use it until you get your t- to your your magic uh, keyboard. I'm not but, doing uh, any kind of keyboarding on my uh, iPad until I get that thing. So yeah, absolutely but, uh, not. This this article had a lot of good information. If you want to um, read through it, and, and we'll we're going to talk. You got to help me along here a little bit. I want to touch upon it, and we can talk about it when when in May when you get your smart keyboard. But uh, definitely. Um, uh, but both the uh, both the Bluetooth trackpad and mouse they pair very easily. Um, it pairs uh, using Bluetooth, and you just have to use a. There's a code, the four zeros, usually with the magic keyboard. Um, but uh, they they sync very 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 easy easily i mean you you did that uh, i i mean you at least tried connecting I, i'm assuming i i don't have a trackpad i have a um as a said, mouse. I, have, I have a logitech mouse that has a uh it's very similar to the uh the magic mouse where the top could kind of act as a trackpad in a sense so i played around with that and some of the gestures worked but not all of them so yeah uh so it, it, it was fine it yeah it did what it had to do the uh, the cursor moves uh, just like uh, it does uh, on a, on a Mac when you're using a mouse, really. And it's got the 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 circle, and then that's the that's the uh, uh, that's the cursor, and it highlights it hi- highlights everything in 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 uh, Pages and any other app that supports it uh, very easily. Um, and uh, so that's what's nice. Instead of using your finger, you just and you just and you, and before you'd have to tap it. Now you can you know click and hold and. And, and and hold it up um changing the the pointer appearance i didn't realize you could do this and this is actually now moving back into accessibility where it was originally uh that uh under accessibility and under the pointer control you can uh, you can make changes to the pointer as well um and there's a bunch of other things in here you can change as well uh contrast hiding pointer color pointer all that uh, fun stuff can be in there spelled, too this article spelled uh color wrong uh, that's because it's British. Yeah, that's stupid. Does that bother you? <laughs> yeah, I've gotten used to it already. Um, but you can go into general and under trackpad, and all the settings are in there as well, as far as uh, the, the the tracking speed and the scrolling, and tap to click and the two finger. You can you can make changes in there, which is great. Um, and then um, all the uh, mouse and uh, trackpad gestures uh, you can use on there as well. You can open the app by by uh, tapping on an icon with one finger uh, and then scrolling with two fingers and right click with two fingers you tap so this is all they've kept it pretty standard you know just like like it is uh, when you're on your mac so um you know app switcher switch between apps access the dock and you know all dragging switch between apps you could do four finger swipe uh and uh using two apps at a time and that's going to make it a little easier because I always I, I still have tr- challenges using uh, Split View. Do you do you yeah, use Split View much? I try. Sometimes I activate it. I don't know what I did to activate it. And uh, um, it's, yeah, I don't use it that much. I mean, I, I even if I perfected how to use it, I don't think I would even use it that much. I just don't use the iPad that way. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd rather just get on a computer and and do it if i if i need to look at more than one thing on the screen i'm i'd rather not do it on the ipad i'd rather do it on a laptop where i I know how to move things around um i wonder i guess if with the pro if you hook up an external monitor to um 
you could hook up a USB monitor, C monitor yeah. to uh, the iPad Pro. Mm-hmm. Is there any way you could do two different screens on that at this point? Because that would know, be useful. No, I, don't know be that's, I don't know if that's available yet. It should um, be available. That would be like, because yeah. you could watch, a, you could do a Zoom meeting on the iPad and have, you know, like like right now, I have an external monitor and I have my laptop and I'm watching you uh, on a Zoom meeting on my laptop and on my external yep. monitor, I have the show notes. So, you know, I thought about, you know, could I do that on iPad? And and you can't really, because, uh, you know, you could with a split screen, but it's kind of hacky. So I bet the next version of iOS uh, will do more with this. I bet they'll do more uh, mouse controls, trackpad controls, and I bet they'll do more uh, multitasking yeah. uh, as we go along. And, and to talk about the, the the word color, the guy guy says, uh, "Don't tell Gaz the color is spelled wrong." It is spelled wrong. <laughs> yeah, they, they added the extra U in there, yeah. uh, and they pronounce it funny. They say "color," no, "color," uh, "color," just like. And, and I think Gaz was just it. Gaz was just in our room not too long ago. If I, unless I did, yeah, he is here. If he's still yeah, he's here, there. he's oh, probably sleeping. Hello, Hopefully, he's sleeping. I'd be. Sleeping yeah, it's pretty I'm late. Sleeping. I'm surprised he's in there. I'm sure he's sleeping. Uh, you yeah, he must have clicked by mistake. Yeah. Uh, oh, crap. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, check it out. We're I I just wanted to give kind of a bit of a review of that uh, and uh, talk about those um um the, the those things. But we'll be talking a lot more of it once uh, once the uh, the smart keyboard comes out. So we got another month, I think, before that's going to be out. I would say May is when I think that's coming out, right? My my uh, smart keyboard. My. Uh... Apple Card is just like sitting there, just waiting. It's prime and waiting. It's right? Like, yeah, three percent on a three hundred dollar keyboard is a couple bucks. You know what is that? One percent is three dollars. Was it six bucks? Do nine bucks? I'm like, yeah, oh, get you're, nine you're, bucks you're, back. You're making some big money there. <laughs> nine bucks for you. I could almost buy an app with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll, buy, maybe I'll buy an app with it. Um, so, uh, check it out. Um, let's, uh, move on. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, iCloud and iCloud storage. I wanted to give you some, give everybody some tips, um, about how to free up iCloud storage space. It's a, that's always a, a challenge. Um, I mean, most of you, I hope are paying for at least the, uh, the 50 gig plan that, uh, gives you a fair amount of space, but you know, uh, default, which is still, I think is absolutely crazy why apple doesn't increase this is beyond me they can afford it uh, the, the the space is only five gigabytes which is that you can fill that up in a matter of seconds yeah why i, I think it's just like it's a marketing thing they give you so little that you, you know that it's useful but you know you can't use it the way they give it to you so um you know it, it drives people to eat it basically says to people if you want it um this is what it does yeah, and it's almost like a you know it's like a try before you buy thing. Uh, it's it's not useful in any real world situation. So I think True. it's just to get people to do it. But yeah, they should give you a little bit more. But if you're real greedy, you don't want to spend, you don't want to give Apple any of your money. I understand. Um, you don't want to pay the for the you know I think what is it ninety nine cents a month for the fifty gig plan? I think it uh, I think it is. Yeah, I think um, so. then, it's pretty, uh, cost you. That's a that's a cost of a. Of a cup of coffee, probably depending on where you go. Yeah, um, two ninety nine, if you, if that's two uh, two ninety nine, yeah, next one up, which is the two hundred gig, two hundred gig, yeah, which is yeah. what I'm on. So is that what you do? What do you do? Uh, how much? I was on the two hundred gig plan, but I had some extra extra dose sitting in my iTunes uh, uh, account. So I've on my uh, App Store account, so I've been doing the uh, the one terabyte. I'm close. Like I'm like right at that border of 200 gig. Uh, cause I do yeah. the family, uh, the family plan. Yeah. Uh, that's what, that's what I got everything on one plan now. So I'm but, pretty close to needing to go up to. So, but, uh, ways of managing it. Um, so the first place you got to go is when you go into your iPhone is, um, or your iPad for that matter is you go into, uh, into settings and then you go into your click your profile because you'll see your profile right at the top there. And then you go into iCloud and here you'll see a detailed breakdown of all your consumed space uh, right there at the very top. And I'll show your iCloud storage. And I almost guarantee if you have five gigs, it's going to say five gigs used, five gigs free. I mean, I'm saying five gigs used and five gigs as tall as you have. So, um, so that, uh, 
that gives you a bit of a challenge. But uh, ultimately, if you want to check in another spot, not just that place, you also can go into the, fi- the Files app on the um, iPhone or iPad, and you could scroll all the way down to the bottom of that window, and then it shows how many items are sitting in the Files app and how much space is available in iCloud on the, in, in that way as well. Um, so what do you normally do as far as getting rid of some things that are on there? Well, one of the first things is notorious that gets left behind, especially for those of you who get new devices all the time, is your backups. Um, I'm sure you've seen that, right? That uh, yep. Having multiple backups sitting there for no reason. Yep, that's the first thing I go for and delete those out. Um, so you can uh, you can actually uh, go through and uh, go to the backups uh, section in there and delete delete the ones that are on there if it says this iphone that means that that don't you can't don't touch that one but there should be a, there might be another ipad pro that you don't have or another ipad or another iphone for that matter it's sitting there get, clear it all out that'll, that'll that'll free up a ton of space um and then the uh uh the other place you can go is photos um if you don't think you want to save all your photos backed up on the cloud or you're just going to back them up manually let's say um some people like to hook up their iphone to uh to their computer to your mac and then just back it up that way you could easily do that um and th- there are people out there who don't like you using icloud at all so that's that there's an option as well um that uh, you, you can consider turning that off to save some space on icloud because really what you want icloud for is just your settings because that's the one that's the most difficult to restore all the time like your your messages and your uh your contacts and all that stuff that's harder to to, to restore uh versus photos because well, you can back up photos easily going you know like i said hooking it up to your mac and just backing it up so um but uh, what you do is for for photos go you, you open the iphone uh, settings app and then you uh, navigate to the profile go to icloud you'll see the breakdown of storage and then you'll see uh one of the choices in icloud called that says photos if you tap the photos uh, section there you'll, you'll actually be able to uh turn on and off the iCloud photos uh, option and what the and what or, or what else you also can do is just completely dis- disable and delete it um what did you think of that i i i, I, really, I guess it really depends on how, how your workflow works right and as far as photos go what i say is you know if if you can do your best to try to pay for storage that agree. will hold everything and uh, your uh your pictures will take a lot of room and that's going to take up most of your room. Um, but it is really kind of awesome having your pictures in the iCloud and having them accessible on every device and having your entire photo library accessible on all your Apple devices. Um, it's just, it's for me, it's been a game changer of just being able to, uh, to have my pictures with me, um, you know, on my phone and on my computer, um, you know, whenever I want. So so that's my that's my real advice is if you could do it, then you could do it. Um, you know, we could sit here and talk about alternative storage for photos uh, that we're not going to talk about. Which I'm going about. to. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we will, but there is alternative storage, um, you know, which is basically going to be uh, you know, Amazon Photos, Google Photos, things like that. Yeah. Um, each of them has their own uh, issues and benefits. Um, but iCloud Photos uh, is 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 worth it to me um and i've i've used it um for since it's been available and i have no regrets about it um but yeah otherwise you know clean up clean up the backups um you know generally um if you have multiple devices um you know you could yeah yeah, clean up back. I, sometimes if you have multiple devices, like you could only have, you only need one backup. Like if you mm-hmm. have an iPad mini and an iPad pro, you could back up one and don't worry about backing up the other. Cause you could restore that one to both of them. Yep. But yeah, that's, that's well, my thought is to pay for it. Just pay for it. Well, there's two other options. If you don't want to use iCloud at all, well, Google Photos, that's a good option. Um, and Google, Google allows you to upload your photos at, and, and uh, albeit it's, the, it does it does only allow uploads of the lower quality photos so it will it will 
change the the quality of photos, um, which is only down downside to that. Um, another option is if you're an Office 365 subscriber, if you have um, you have OneDrive available OneDrive. to you, yeah. they give you one terabyte of storage uh, for OneDrive, and you can easily sync all your photos onto OneDrive using that. And that yeah. one terabyte, that's that's great. And if you're already an Office 365 subscriber and subscriber, yeah, then there's no reason to have a. a the iCloud for your photos, so you can just back up all your photos on there. Um, OneDrive is great. I mean, I use it in the corporate world, and um, it 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 it's it, it has gotten a lot better the way Microsoft's been managing it. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know we could sit here and have debates about privacy and and ease of use yeah. and all that, but we don't do that here because it's a, it's a it's there's it's a it's a non-winnable argument. Um, in my, in my <laughs> That's opinion. right, but um. You know, I, I've I've done the Google Photos. Uh, uh, Amazon Photos yeah. is actually not even that bad, too. But um, yeah, um, there's there's definitely alternatives. Uh, but if you c- could shell out to two two or three bucks a month, then do it. Yeah, and um, the other uh, the other option is uh, uh, de- deleting your iCloud Drive folders. Um, uh, iCloud Drive, if you uh, if you store files on your uh, on your device, um, you can go into uh, the iCloud Drive, and then there is a choice there of deleting documents and data. So if there's specific documents and data that are saved on spe- for sp- specific apps, you can go in and remove that. Now. Uh, beware if you do if you do uh, go in and do that um especially messages messages is probably the most important of, of all the things you want to probably back up um you want to make sure that you're not deleting that because <laughs> otherwise you'll be losing all those uh, messages that you have and a lot of people live in their messages trust me i've i've seen it yep what do you think um that's they're hard to clean out but yeah i on the if you have a mac there's an easier way to do it too um, if you go into manage uh, the Apple menu and you go about this Mac and then you go to manage uh, st- uh, storage and then manage from there, there's it will show you all your messages uh, as as one of the categories with the attachments in there. And you can go in there and, uh, and delete them out. And if yeah. iCloud's, uh, iCloud uh, message sync is on, it will kind of delete them out everywhere. So I found that to be a little bit easier if you have a Mac to do it there. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, so that's my little spiel, our little spiel on, uh, backups and iCloud and, uh, you know, be, just be aware of it. And, uh, all we have to say is make sure you're backing up. Don't, don't, I don't want to hear any of these horror stories I keep hearing that I don't, I lost all my contacts. I lost all my calendar entries. I lost all this information because you weren't backing up. Yeah. And that's the thing. Don't, don't delete out things until you know that you're sure that, you know, that exactly you know, or or you know it's we i've heard stories of people trying to save uh the space in iCloud and then realizing they right. shouldn't have done that so just be sure what you're doing read the uh the link that you uh is there a link to you put in there or no we just talked about it but yeah um, no i'll put a, a link for uh, uh how to back up uh, yeah uh, how to free up storage and things like that yep and we'll put a link in the show notes on that and um and uh, there's some articles out there, uh, including what I, we just talked about. So, um, but yeah, ch- uh, please back up. Yep. I, yep. I, can't, I can't, I can't not talk about that on the show at least two times a month <laughs> at the minimum. Uh, Cause you got to back up. Um, no, another tip. I wanted to talk about how you automatically request a desktop version of a website uh, on iOS, do you do you do uh, that a lot? Uh, do you ever request the desktop version of a website on your iPhone or your iPad? Uh, there's one or two websites that I go to that you need to do it, but most of the time I don't need to do it. Yeah. Um, so the way you do that is it's very quickly easy. The way to do it is if you, you basically go into Safari on your iPhone, uh, and then when it's fully loaded, you'll see an icon on the top left. It's got the two A's. It's an AA icon on the dress bar. When you tape, when you tap that, the, the a menu appears, and that that gives you the option to request the desktop uh, west website. Basically, what that does is it it brings up the desktop version of the website because there might be in some cases uh, I've seen tons of times that the web version of a website is nowhere. Near near as uh, accessible as the desktop version, right? Right, yeah. Um, so go, you click that and just be sure that you're, uh, uh, that you're uh, uh, in that mode so it, uh, it uh, goes to that type of site. And if you don't, 
and once you oh, close out the browser and go back in again, it'll 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 revert back to the uh, the mobile version again. Um, and uh, what you can do also is if you want to permanently request a desktop website for a site, um, you can always uh, have that uh, full desktop view of that site. Uh, the steps are very similar, but you have a little, a little, little different as far as uh, how that happens. So the same thing, you're going to go to the Safari uh, on your iPhone and open, when the page fully loads, tap the AA icon, and then the menu appears, go to website settings under while viewing, section toggle request desktop website, you tap done. Um, and then that's it. Um, then if you want to set it uh, automatically and immediately uh, to the desktop for version, um, just just do it again. Reverse the steps, um, and then that that'll give you an option making it permanent. Um, and it, it, and sometimes it doesn't always stick, but you always can go back and do it again. So, but again, I I think that this with this tip, I don't think a lot of people um, request desktop versions of their of of uh, the websites on. Um, on that so um yeah so don't uh don't fret it uh if you don't uh don't have to go to that desktop version of the website and just use the web version of it it's fine any other comments on that nope sounds good to me yep um and then um i wanted to throw one app in in the mix i don't know if there's any apps that you've uh, been using as of late that that are new to you um one Not of them, really. I would really. You no, I don't have any. So go ahead. Uh, one of one of them, I would uh, I, I'm a st- that stands out to me is I've been had been using is uh, Instacart. Have you used Instacart before? No, no, not yet. We've used other type of things, but not that. What what other services are out there that you use? Um. Well, I mean the the, the grocery stores here have their own versions of it. So like, oh really? Yeah, like ShopRite has ShopRite from home. So basically, yeah. that's our local uh, merchant. So we could go online, do their app, and basically um, yeah. order for online. So it's, I think Instacart is more for different, you know, not just one store, right? It's a right. It's store. I mean, I can go to Costco, Sam's Club, and all my local grocery stores, um, right. which is nice. It gives you a full full out choice. I never thought of using that before because to me that's kind of lazy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so I think I can go drive to the grocery store to load up, but in this in this day and age of, of the of the, with the with the coronavirus and pandemic, yeah, we want to be safer. Uh, granted, you still have somebody that is touching and grabbing stuff off the shelf for you. You still got to clean all the uh, the boxes, regardless if you go to the store or if you uh, um, or or if they do it for you. Uh, but it is really convenient. So uh, the app is really easy to use, very smooth. Um, allows you to shop through the store and you know make decisions of what you want. And they got a neat feature where you can go in and, and they'll know right away if the store is low on stock. And it says, if it's low on stock, do you want this as a substitute? And a lot of times I would go in and say, no, I don't want that. If it isn't available, I don't want it. So a good, a good example was toilet paper came up and I said, well, maybe they have it. And I says, uh, I, and I flagged it. Well, if it's if not available, I don't want anything. <laughs> and like, sure enough, it wasn't available. We don't have toilet what a surprise. paper. We don't have, what is, what, we what don't a have surprise. toilet paper, but we have goldfish. If you want goldfish instead, yeah, I could have got goldfish that. instead. No, yeah, he came up with some a similar type of paper product of some sort, which <laughs> had nothing to do with toilet paper. Right. Sandpaper. Um, but, that, mm. but which is good, and so you got to be. That's one of the things when you do, when you go into the site, into the site, and then use the app, is to be sure. Are you really sure they're going to substitute stuff? Because I did get in a situation where we wanted to get some yogurt, and they didn't have the yogurt that we wanted, and then they substitute some yogurt that was higher calorie and higher sugar so we didn't want sure. that so yeah. uh, so you could so kind of be aware of that but the other cool thing too is actually that when the shopper is in the store actually shopping you actually can chat with them real in in real time and say hey, i i did it too i says hey can you uh pick me up uh, uh uh some bread i forgot to put that on the list and uh they, they say sure no problem and then they, they go ahead and do it for you and some like some salad i had some lettuce i wanted to buy because it actually wasn't listed for sam's club i went to sam's club and uh it wasn't listed and i'm like Okay, could you look for this dull uh, garden salad? And she found it, and uh, mm. but of course it wasn't on their catalog of stuff that that you can normally pick from from the choices uh, when you add them to the list. So um, deliveries are pretty quick, and of course this with this in this day and age right now, what's going on? It uh, sometimes you could be postponed for a few days. But anyway, check it out. I have a link in the show notes for Instacart, uh, their app, and uh, uh, I believe they're owned by Amazon now. They were, it was, it was its own independent company, but I believe the Amazon now owns them, uh, but they, they're running independent um, for now, for now. So 
Um, so that was interesting. Um, but then I didn't see Whole Foods as a choice to shopping. So, <laughs> uh, uh, there's another, I think I saw a commercial for another company that does a similar thing. Maybe it's ship it or something. I can't remember the name, but it's yeah. the same deal. But there are but, plenty out there, but uh, that's just one you could check out. And, uh, people, and, uh, people are out there risking their lives for our lettuce. I mean, that's good. Yeah. As long as they get they paid are. for it. Yeah. They, you know, the people want money and some people are not, you know, as worried uh, as others and that's fine. And, uh, you know, if they want to do it, they could, there's no gun to their head and they, you know, they get paid. So there's people that Absolutely. work and, you know, people go to work at jobs every day that are dangerous and get paid for it. And you know, it's just one of the things. It uh, sure is. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and wrap this uh, things up for this week. Um, please, and, and thanks everybody on Facebook Live that were watching, uh, watching us record. Uh, uh, to shout out to everybody there. Um, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, suggestions, and questions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others, or better yet, just go to our website at in touch with ios.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there i am dave ginsburg and you can find me on twitter at dave g65 warren where can everybody find you uh, i'm on uh, usually on facebook at the uh, mac to the future uh, group uh on facebook uh which is a great place to hang out and uh, talk about a uh, bunch of topics including uh technology mostly including technology um, I'm on uh, uh, this show and uh, I do Twitter at W Square, but I haven't checked it in like a year. So, that's <laughs> really all right. Appreciate you being here as always, Warren. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again very soon. See ya.